131, class starts. Sorry for those who are late. Can you see that thing? Okay. <laughs> All right. So we are going to talk about lots of important stuff. And uh, I, I will start prompt. So uh, last time we waited five minutes for those people who were late. Now it's two minutes. So uh, I'll start anyway. Okay. So uh, we are going to talk about derived classes. First of all, let's uh, go with the standard. So any questions, anything you want to talk about at the moment? Any questions one? Any questions two? All right. And I'm going to need your uh, kind of undivided attention on this. This is uh, something that we're going to go through. And the material we're going to hear today is approximately two weeks worth of material. But the thing is that because they uh, fit one back to one by one back to back so nicely, it is better to say it this way. But then we're going to keep reviewing it over and over. <clears throat> uh, people are asking if we are having quiz tomorrow. The answer is yes. Lab, we have during lab, we always have a quiz. What is the quiz about? Last things we talked about. And uh, so it's uh, quiz number six and what we're going to talk about today. Okay. So that's what is the quiz about. Now, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to start this with something that I done a long time ago. And, and I use this to, uh, to kind of teach uh, about inheritance and drive classes. The very first thing that we need to understand over here is what uh, inheritance is. So quickly, we're going to go through the definition we talked about last time, saying what is inheritance. Inheritance essentially reusing design. Inheritance means you already have a class. You want to build another class that, that, is, that is the same thing with additional features or, limited, uh, or limiting the features, whatever, with changes. And you want to just build new thing out of an already existing thing. You give an example of having a bicycle. And now I'm tired of pedaling, so I put an engine on it. And now it drives me around, rides me around. And I call that a motorcycle. So motorcycle is a bicycle with an engine. So if somebody have never seen a motorcycle, but they have seen a bicycle, you tell them a motorcycle is a bicycle with an engine, and it goes by itself. You don't have to pedal. They would understand exactly what you're talking about because they have seen a bicycle before, of course. Um, it's going to look ridiculous in their mind, like a bicycle with a motor. But <laughs> so it's, it's, there's nothing like a Harley Davidson. But when they're going to look at the real thing, they'll, they'll find out that this is a motorcycle. So <clears throat> that's how inheritance works. And actually, to, to show you how it works, I created a class called Animal. And we're going to go through that class Animal uh, and keep changing it to new things and, and, and see how everything works, understand the syntax and make sure everything's good. Uh, but before that, just kind of to keep you, uh, your brains going, well, we are going to make this thing look nice and beautiful as we go through it. So the next uh, step that we're going to go through, we have a way to track stuff nicely. So <clears throat> by an animal, um, essentially, um, my abstraction of an animal is this one. So when I say abstraction, when I say my abstraction of an animal, I mean, uh, what do I mean? Oh, I like that mouse. That looks like you're an enterpriser. You're about to land. OK. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> See, I, I'm, not, I'm not joking. Look at this thing. It's like, you know, like you're in right a, a UFO or something. That's good. All right. So yeah, so, so what is abstraction? Do you know what abstraction is when, we say, when I say abstraction? This is my abstraction of an animal. What does it mean, abstraction? What does it mean, abstraction? When I say abstraction, what, is, what, are, what does it mean? We said abstraction is required by anyone who does programming because abstraction is what helps you to actually design stuff. If we don't have abstraction, we cannot program because abstraction is? <laughs> abstraction is? Abstraction is hiding details. 
that's kind of encapsulation type of thing, but abstraction is not hiding details. It's that's encapsulation, not abstraction. No, no, no. No examples. I want to know what abstraction. Have you seen an abstract art? You, does anybody know what an abstract art is? Like you go to a like a gallery, you see there's a painting in a wall. There's a triangle with two dots on it, and say, what is this? This is a lady dancing. And we say, what the heck? And says, that's the painter's abstraction of a lady dancing, because it looks like it's a skirt and you know two eyes and that whatever. Okay. So now, do you know what abstraction means? <laughs> Did I make it more difficult? <clears throat> so okay, abstraction. Go ahead. Go. <laughs> Point of view of a person, which it means. Yes, only what is important to you. So abstraction essentially means take the stuff that you need for your program, what business logic dictates, ignore the rest. If you can't do that, you cannot program. You cannot program every aspect of a thing. When I ask you to program something, you need to see what features are needed in the program. You keep those and just forget about everything else. So when I say this is my abstraction of an animal, it means I'm not going to put what, what is, what is the, like, the, the skin of the animal looks like or what. Like, I'm not going to do stuff like that. It's just the silly abstraction of an animal to give you examples. OK? So my, yes. Basic, the definition of framework is watch what uh, you use to implement stuff. So framework is like a uh, space within you can do your development. That becomes, I know, I see what you're saying. Uh, but don't use the word framework, because framework um, in computer science is mostly the boundary within you can develop. So what is your framework? I, I'm using .NET framework. You know, I'm using PHP framework. So <clears throat> framework is essentially like what my, my workshop looks like. What are my tools? Um, but yeah, uh, it, it's not uh, much of what uh, I want to develop, but what I'm using to develop. So abstraction essentially means Take what you want and leave the rest away. So in my opinion, an animal is something that has a name and it, has, it can act, move, and sound. Okay, An animal can act in a wild way. If it's a lion, it can be very uh, nice and kind. If it's a mm, puppy, uh, an animal moves in a certain way. If it's a, a snake, uh, it goes in certain If it's a fish, it, it, it swims. If it's, a, I don't know, a, a cheetah, it's going to run. So uh, different types of movement, and it makes a sound. So uh, a dog says wolf, a cat says meow, and I don't know, a uh, lion says err. OK, something like that. Um, and uh, to be able to accommodate all these things, I need to be able to set the name of an animal. For that, I create a method, a private method, that my object needs to be able to set the animal. And I have a, a that is a, a modifier or a setter. And I have a getter to get the animal name if I need to, but everybody needs to be able to know what the name of the animal is. So it is a public thing. Everybody can see what the name of an animal is, but only my constructor can set it to whatever it is. So that's my abstraction of an animal. Are we okay with it? It's a very simple thing. And, and, and uh, give me a second. Let me show you actually how the functions are. And in here, I created a copy construct and a copy assignment just in case you want to practice what you learned about classes with resources. This doesn't have any resources outside of its scope, so there is no need for these. But if in for walkthrough cases, if you want to activate them and see how things are happening, you can do that. But for our purpose, it is not needed. So if I look at my animal, the animal actually looks like something like this. So the implementation of an animal is that when I create an animal, I'm setting the name, and I am, I am mentioning that I'm creating an animal. So it kind of shows a message 
that is not supposed to actually show. It's kind of a debugging message. But I'm showing creating the animal, whatever the name is. And uh, the, uh, the getter name returns a constant character pointer of the name. Uh, the setter name sets the animal using my utility class that has an SDR copy in it so I don't have string. It's my, my utility class is here with lots of tools in it, as you see. We can take a look at it later. Um, but it's a utility class and it has stuff in it. And when I include it, it's going to be available. I'll show you how. Um, and uh, oh, so where was I? Uh, right here, yeah. An animal can act, so it's going to say whatever the animal is acts like an animal, like, I don't know, um, Jerry acts like animal, Jerry moves like animal, Jerry sounds like animal. I hope nobody's called Jerry in this class. Like uh, Tom and Jerry, the, 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 you know, Tom, oh, sorry, Tom, Jerry was a mouse. <laughs> so, so whatever, anyways, anyways, uh, so I just uh, used the name. I hope nobody over here is actually called Jerry. I didn't mean, mean to offend anybody by that. All right, so, so and if I, if, if I test my program, my program works like this. So essentially I'm saying uh, I, I am creating animal. I'm going to call it Buffy, and I'm going to say, a act, a move, a sound, and that's the end of main. And when I run the program, the constructor and destructor are going to show messages. So creating Buffy the animal, Buffy acts like animal, Buffy moves like animal, Buffy sounds like animal, removing Buffy the animal. And that's the destructor. Are we okay with this? Very simple class for teaching purposes. Anybody have any problem with this class of mine? Okay, those debugging messages are very annoying. So. I need to be able to remove them if I want to. So it's a good idea to have a flag, some kind of a flag somewhere, uh, so I can actually turn it on and off. So um, I'm going to come in this animal thing and create a global variable. I'm going to call it Boolean debug, and I'm going to set that by default to say false. Okay, And I'm going to add a, uh, an if statement. So I'm going to say if debug. This has nothing to do with. Uh, Inheritance and derived class is just a technique that I'm showing you to just teach you something. So this is a debugging thing when it's getting created. I need to be able to turn it on and off. And, and the same thing for destructor. For destructor, I'm going to say if debug. And I'm going to do it like this. So now I have a global variable. Debug is false when I run it. Obviously, I'm not going to get those messages anymore. And if I uh, turn that thing to true, debugging to true, then I'm going to get the messages for myself. Are we good? Problem with this thing is that every time I want to turn the debugging message on and off, I have to go to the source code. I want to be able to do it in a main. In a main, I want to be able to set the debugging to on and off. I just said that this is a global variable. That's absolute lie. It is not global. If it was global, I could have accessed it in the main, correct? If it's not global, what is the scope of the of debugging here? What are the types of scopes? Let's go. When I say scope, what are the types of scope? Give me one of them. A scope. Remember, that, that, that's a, the beginning of the you, Can you name any of them? Function scope. L Ah, uh, because they don't call it local. F no, function scope, block scope, right? Lock scope, uh, uh, file scope, global scope. So global file, function, and, uh, pardon me? Block. Okay, right? These are the uh, things. So from all these, what is the scope of debug? Block. Local block uh, function file global. Which one? It's not block. If it was block, if it was inside animal, it was block. Or no, sorry. If it was inside an if statement, it was it was block. If it was inside animal, it was function. So what do you think the? Yeah, it's it. Yeah, it is within SDDS. But what is the scope of debug? No. If it was global, I could access it in, in main. I can't. It's file scope. 
It is only visible in this file and nowhere else. Do we understand this? Okay, so it is, all, it is in here. Now, if, so how can I make this thing to become global? How do we make a real global variable? Let's learn that. Okay? Pardon me? No, it's going to be still file. Namespace is something new. A namespace is something new in C++. When I say new, I mean 10 years, okay? We didn't have namespaces before that. Now we have namespaces, so you can put sp names in, space, in namespaces don't, not to have conflict. So you can have same name in different namespaces. But this debug, by definition, is in kind of a file, of course, namespace. It is in a namespace, but it has a file scope. It is visible in this file and in the namespace, SCDS, obviously. But, yeah, so, but yeah, so that's true. But if we have, well, let's say it's not a variable. If it was a function, and you have a function, and you want to make the function available in other files, make the access to the function global, what do you do? You put a prototype in the header file, correct? That's what we do, right? So all we need to learn is to how to create a prototype for a variable. So I can tell to all the files, hey, there is a file scope variable. I want everybody to be able to access to it, have access to it. How do I do that? A uh, uh, um, um, a, 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 a prototype for a global variable to make a variable global is like this. You write extern, and then you write the exact same thing you have over here. So now that, why is it giving me an error? I'll put it inside the class. Shoot. Here, sorry. Yeah. So yeah. So you say extern boolean debug. It means this, when if I include my animal header file anywhere, they, that file is aware that there is a debug defined in another file and can use it. Okay? And they can change the values and stuff. There are no encapsulation for, an exter for a global variable. You can make it a constant, like if I want to have con like pi to be 3.141592. If I want to have that thing, I can make it constant, but give them access. I can do that. So this makes the variable global. Now, in here, it, so debugging, I'm going to set it to false by default. Now I can come in main. And in main, because I'm using namespace SDDS, I have access to the stuff in SDDS. So I'm going to say debug is set to true, and it will understand it because it has the animal included. Now I can set the debugging to true in here to have the messages shown, or I can set it to false for them not to be shown, as you see. Are we okay with this? I have used the same technique for my utilities. Because I didn't my functions to go everywhere, I put all my utility functions inside a class called utils. So if you look at my utils class, utils.h, if you look at my utils header file, my utils header file, let me just uh, minimize this and minimize this. My utils header file in here has all the stuff that I, I'm there, like to lowercase, convert something to lowercase, do string cat, do string compare in different ways, do string copy in different ways, do strlen, uh, search for a string, is it alphanumeric, is it a space, uh, trim this word to remove the spaces from beginning and the end. Uh, do a string copy, by in, but in lowercase. Convert in lowercase and do a string copy. Read something into a string uh, dynamically. Uh, get an integer in a foolproof way. Get an integer. So all the other different things. And I, but this is inside the class. Because it's, uh, it's inside the class, I have to insta instantiate the class to use them, correct? These are methods. So what I did in my utils.cpp, exactly like that debug thingy, I created this instance called it utils.ut. You see that? And then inside my utils.h, I made it external. You have been using this since day one. 
C out is exactly the same. C out is an instance of O stream. They externed it in O stream header file. That's why you can use C out everywhere. That's why you can use C in everywhere. Because they, are, they, they made an instance out of it, they made it global using an extern. So my, any place I want to do a string copy, I don't want it to get confused with the string header file. I say ut dot str copy. It means I'm using my utilities str copy. And it works that way. Now, <clears throat> so that's, that's why in, in my animal, you will see over here, it says ut dot string copy. You see that? Because it includes utils.h, it has access to the ut global variable. Global, of course, is a composite variable, but it's a compound, compound variable, it's a compound type, and, and all its functionalities. Are we okay with this? All right? So that gives us the tools we need to start actually to see how everything works. So are we okay with this animal thing one, one last time? So take a look at the animal. I have an animal, I can create it, do whatever I want to do with it. Yes? Uh, how do I use the utils everywhere? Okay, so I created a class utils <clears throat> with all the functionalities that I want as member functions. Then, to be able to use these member functions, I have to instantiate utils. I have to make an instance of the utils. But I don't want to do it every single place I want to use it. I want one global utils to get created and use it everywhere. So what I did in my utils.cpp, I created a file scope instance of utils. And inside the header file, I made it global. Now in my animal, if I want to use the utils functionalities, all I need to do is to include utils.h. And using the extern, it gives access to that utils everywhere. And C out is the exact same thing. All right, yes. Is it, uh, the helper function is the Yeah, but I didn't want to create a standalone function. It's an object oriented language. I didn't want to create a header file with all the functions in there. Helper, fu yeah, helper function is a bad, help, you should not have a helper function until you really need help. You never need, you never, but, but helper functions, yes, they are global too. They are like, that's C, we don't want to go back. And anything you, any function you create, a helper function is a standalone function. We learned that in C already. We have header files in C and we use our functions, right? I don't want to do that. I don't want to have, <clears throat> I, want, I want to have my toolbox carried with me. And that's my utils. Anything I want to do to many different things, I'll put it in my toolbox. And anytime I want, I just instantiate it and take it with me anywhere I want so I can use it. So I don't have to use the old C style stuff and keep getting warnings everywhere. All right? Okay, so that's that. So are we okay with the animal thingy now? Okay? So if you want to see how animals uh, copy constructor and copy assignment works, what you need to do, go in main in here and, un, uh, and make these functions, in a, in a, uh, uh, uncomment these functions and uncomment the, uh, the copy constructor and copy assignment. It's going to show the messages and you'll see how they work. This is not to cover that. I did that in the other class and lost lots of time for no reason. So uh, you've already learned this in week four. Please, by, by all, in, uh, sorry, in uh, classes with resources, as a practice, bring it up so you can see how everything is called. Are we good down to this point? All right. So now I have an animal, right? But what if I want, what if I want to have a cat? If I want a cat, what do I do? Create everything from scratch again? I know cat is an animal, correct? So that's what I'm going to do. By the way, this is the first time you are seeing that I have multiple projects in one solution. It's not only one. I put it in several different ones so you see how it's getting improved one by one. So this is July 12th. This is the, the code that I have over here. Okay. And then uh, the next one is animal that I had. Now I'm going to go to the cat project. So I'm going to make this as a startup project. And now when I compile it, that's the first thing that's going to run. 
So in my cat, as you see, I have an animal. And the animal is the good old animal that I had before. Now the syntax of inheritance is as follows. If you want to say cat is an animal with such specifications, this is how you do it. First of all, you have to include animal.h in cat.h because you are using that design. Then you have to say class cat, column, public animal, which means cat is an animal. Okay? The word public over there remains public in OOP244 and OOP345. Changing public to protected or private is too rich for our blood. We don't want to go through it. Okay, so for now, the syntax for you is only public. Remember that. Okay? And you never change that to anything else. <clears throat> then I'm saying, okay, now, a cat is an animal. The only difference between a cat and an animal is that cat has many number of lives that an animal doesn't have. And by default, number of lives is nine, correct? All right, so I could actually do that. I can actually come over here and even add that one. So in here, I'm going to say cat is an animal with number of lives that is initially nine. I can do that, right? Are we okay with this? And I can say when I create a cat, cat can be defaulted with a default constructor. Cat can have a name and number of lives, so you can create a cat for four number of lives, which means this cat already died five times. Right? Something like that. I'm saying died, and I just say, we'll go, mm, no, it's, it's just an example. I'm not killing any cat. It's just, okay? <laughs> just an example. Okay? <clears throat> and then I can say, a cat acts differently than an animal. Okay? So this is a new thing that you haven't seen before. Let me explain. Now, <clears throat> an animal has act, correct? A cat has act. Look at the signature of the two. They are identical, correct? When you had two functions with the same name and different arguments, we said, what are we doing to that function? Overloading the function. When in the, in, in the hierarchy of inheritance, you have two functions that are identical, they are not overloaded anymore because they are identical. They don't have any difference with their signature. So what do we say? We're going to say the derived class is overriding the base class's method. When a, when a method, and we cannot say function anymore because override only applies to inheritance. You cannot override the regular thing. Okay, override means the parent the parent's action, the parent's method, is overwritten by the child's. Are we okay with this? So essentially, the, in this case, the cat's act shadows the animal's act. Got it? But in this case, I'm saying cat doesn't have any typical movement. So I'm not implementing the movement. You see, I'm commenting it just to show. Which means if I create a cat and ask the cat to move, it's going to move like its mother, which means regular animal. Got it? Anything that overrides the parent will shadow the parents. If you don't shadow it, the parents will be caught. Let's take a look at it. <clears throat> and as you see, Cat has an extra method called play that the regular animal doesn't have. Okay, we say it's just imagination. Again, that's my abstraction of it. A cat plays, but I don't know. A regular animal doesn't. They just survive. Okay, <laughs> all right. I know everybody's laughing at me. It's just I'm just <laughs> trying to make something. So this has an extra thing. All right. So. Obviously, let's, let's take a look at the, the code for, for, the, for, the, for the cat. So in a cat, when I'm actually creating a cat, when I'm creating a cat, as you see in the constructor, in the default constructor of the cat, in the initialization area. Did I talk about the initialization area in this class? 
We did not. Okay. Initialization area is, is an area that I call it as initialization area. Okay. It it doesn't it doesn't mean anything. Okay. It you cannot find this in a text. I'll call it initialization area. Where is initialization area? The space after the constructor's prototype and before the body of the prototype. Take a look at that. Look at this. This is initialization area. So see, this is a regular dis constructor, correct? This area, I call it initialization area. That is the place where you can initialize part of the class before the constructor is called. So in a cat, when cat is defaulted, I'm saying build the animal and give the default name Garfield. So if I build a cat, the cat's name is going to be Garfield. If you're old, you know what I mean. If you've seen ever Garfield, I don't know if you didn't know. But anyway, it used to be a character in a, in a cat thing, a cat animation. But anyways, so I'm saying if you don't name the cat, I want the animal not to be defaulted, not to be nameless, but to be called Garfield. I can do that. Or I can, not, I can just leave it empty. If I leave it empty, then the default constructor of the animal will be called, and it will be nameless. Okay, But I didn't do that, so you can choose in the initialization area how to build the base part. Okay, And remember, we don't have two classes. It's one class that has two parts. When I say a cat, don't think an animal and a cat. No, I have one class cat that is built upon an animal. Okay, they're the same thing. And then in here, I'm going to say, when it's defaulted, set the number of lives to nine. So um, I know it, it's kind of conflicted with what I put over here. Just, uh, or you can do something like this. Uh, make it a uh, safe empty state. Make it zero. I just wanted to default it to, to give you the message that it's always best that you initialize all your attributes. What is an attribute? When I say attribute, what does it mean? When I say attribute, what does it mean? Mem no, no, member variable. Member variable of a class, that's the object-oriented terminology. Mems, when I say member variable, that's C++. When you say attribute, you went to the object orientation science. In an, in an object-oriented book that doesn't have any specific language, and you want to learn how to write an object-oriented program with any language, they call methods and attributes. There is no member functions in there. They say methods and attributes. A method is a member function in C++. An attribute is a member variable in C++. Right? Are we good? Good. So, so in here I'm saying uh, always initialize the attributes of your class. And in the initialization area I'm setting the animal and I'm, setting the, uh, and I'm initializing number of lives. Always the initialization, the inline initialization of the, of the attribute supersedes the initialization, er, initialization area. It means it happens first. So if you make that 9 in the constructor, first it will be 0, then it becomes 9. Got it? So first, the initialization happens at line 9 of cat.h, then the initialization, the, the initialization area of the constructor is called that sets the number of lives to 9. Are we good? Are we OK? And in the other constructor that I am receiving the cats, uh, at the back, over there, can, like, can you see this or is it too small? Too small? Can you see this? OK, the reason is that I need some real estate to, to show some. Uh, can you see it? Can you see it? Everybody's OK? All right. So 150% uh, is OK. So, so <clears throat> now, in here, I'm saying, I'm saying C out default, uh, uh, as defaulted with. In here, it's a good idea. Do I have the debug in here? Uh, uh, I think I do. Let me see. If, let me look at my animal. Yeah, my animal has debug, so in cat.cpp, I can say if debug over here. If 
debug show that. Otherwise, I don't want to show the, those messages, right? All right, and now when I'm creating, uh, like having two argument constructor over here, I am receiving the number of lives, and obviously this is the, the initialization area. So I'm saying pass the name to the animals, and as you see, I'm using different notations. In this one, I use, uh, at the top one, I use parentheses in front of the, uh, the constructor. You see that? At the bottom, I use curly brackets, the universal way, for you to see all different versions of it. It doesn't mean that they, it has to be that way, but you can use parentheses or you can use the universal way, potatoes, potatoes. So in here, I'm setting the animal's name and the number of lines, and if debugging is active, I'm going to say uh, as a cat with number of lives. So, so I'm kind of building up to the message of the constructor of the parent. In the act, I'm saying act, and as you see, move is commented over here. Sound is saying meow, and then makes the sound. So if cat is completely, sorry, action of a cat is completely shadowing the action of the animal. But if you look at the sound, I'm saying meow, but I still want it to sound like an animal. So I can invoke the animal part of it. But because the animal part is not an instance, I cannot use a dot. I have to use the name of the base class with scope resolution. So I have to say, call the sound of my animal part. That's why you say animal, the name of the class, and scope resolution when you want to invoke the basis methods. So I'm going to say animal, the cat makes a sound, first says meow, and then acts like a so the sound is not completely shadowing the sound of the animal. The sound of the cat is adding something to what the base class can do. Okay? So you either completely change the action, like act. You can completely ignore and don't implement it, which means automatically the base is going to get called. Or you can shadow it, but inside that shadowing, manually call the parent to use that logic too. They are all possible. Are we okay with this? So let's go through it, walk through it, and see what happens. So this is my main. And in my main, I'm creating uh, a cat, and I'm, gonna, I'm, calling it the, I'm calling it Fluffy. Then I'm going to create a cat, and I'm going to call it, call it G. It means defaulted. And then I'm creating a reference of I don't know why am I creating that, so let's remove that one. I don't need it. Why do I need a reference? Yeah, you know, that, that, that was for, somebody asked me, like, if I create a reference, that is going to get created. No, we don't. We know it's just going to be a new name for it, so we don't, we don't care. Okay? So, <clears throat> so I'm doing it like this. Uh, And let's run it. Okay, let's take a look at main and see what the output is. Oh. <clears throat> so as you see, this, this line, it's going to say, because I have the debugging to true, it's actually showing all the messages. So creating Fluffy the animal, this is the constructor of the animal being called. Then it says, as a cat with five lives, and that's the, the constructor of the cat continuing to build up the cat. Are we okay with this? Okay. Then I am defaulting the cat G. We named it Garfield the animal as defaulted cat with nine lives. So as you see, the default constructor is called. Are we okay with this? Okay. Now in here, I'm going to say G act. It's going to act playful Garfield the cat, act playful Fluffy the cat. But when I'm moving, because it's not implemented, it does what the parent does, which is Fluffy moves like animal because I did not add any improvements to move. And then I'll go to the sound, which I actually say a meow and then act like a 
sound like an animal. So what happens, the first one that is act, completely shadowing the parent, the second one that is move, is, is making no improvements or changes to the action of the parent, and the third one is changing and at the same time using the code for the old one, and that's how it happens. And as you see, they die in reverse because you build a cat over an animal when you are removing it, first the animal will be removed and then the cat. Oh, sorry, first the cat will be removed and then the animal. So the top one will go first, obviously, because it's in hand. Are we okay with this? All right. So that's the syntax of inheritance and functions in hierarchy. We are finished with the week that we had today, uh, this week. Now we're going to go to next week, okay? All right, are we okay down to this point? There's nothing extraordinary about it. Everything is like that, but there's one thing I have to add in here. Let's come back to the animal. There is one thing that comes in play when we are dealing with inheritance. Let me bring the animal.h over here. Let's say in play over here, Let's say I do not want people to have access to the name of the animal. Okay? So I'm going to make that name private. Because when they say act, I should decide who's acting. They don't need, no, why do they need to know what the name is? Animal is going to act, it's going to act like an animal, and so on and so forth. Are we okay with this? Let's say that's my abstraction of the thing. Problem over here is that this. When I do this, let me see if I actually ever use it. I'm going to uh, try to compile and run it. You will see that it's not going to compile. Why? Because cat is trying to use the name to say who's doing what, and it cannot do it, you see? Because it's private now. Although cat is derived from animal, the private parts of the animal are not accessible to it. It's like, you're, like your father has a Porsche 911 and doesn't want you to drive it. But he has a Ford Festiva that he doesn't mind you to drive it, right? But he does, he's not going to let me to drive the Ford Festiva. Ford Festiva is only for the family. Porsche 911 is your father's or your mother's, right? Are we okay with this? This type of thing needs an additional type of protection. In hierarchy of inheritance, private things are not even directly accessible by children. But you need to have something that makes what you want accessible to children, but no one else. So only the children can access it. Only the derived classes can access it, but not outsiders. That type, of, that, type, that type of protection is called protected. So if I want the name over there to be accessible by children but not outsiders, I can say over here, protected. Oops. Which means name can be used by children but not outside. So when I run this program now, it will work perfectly, as you see. But if I go to main and try to manually print the name, it's not going to let me. It's going to tell me, hey, what are you doing? Uh, I wanted to see what the error is. Anyways, let me compile it and show you the error. <clears throat> Over there, it's going to tell you that that thing is actually uh, uh, private. Okay? So, so the error over here, I don't know why it's doing that. So you see, cannot access protected member declared in class animal. So it won't allow you. So this was not accessible. But it is accessible to cat. So protected stuff inside 
the class can be accessed by derived classes, but not by anybody else. So now you have one extra uh, uh, thing. You have private, so I'm just going to add the private. We don't need to. It's just over there to kind of uh, be obvious about it. So in here, I'm going to say private. So I have private, protected, public. Private, only the class. Protected, the class and derived classes. Public, everyone. Are we good? Done. Next is this. There is a problem with object orientation that we have to resolve. That problem is that I have to actually tell you about my, 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 my father a little. <laughs> my father was uh, a teacher too. He used to teach mechanics. Okay, I'm teaching C++. If this analogy is wrong analogy that I, my father is the base class and I am the derived class, this is wrong. I told you this is not a right thing to, to do because me and my father are actually instances of male human beings. So you're, it is not my, he, unless he was a monkey, <laughs> he couldn't have been my, like a Neanderthal, he couldn't be my. So what, what I'm saying is that it, I'm not going that way. So, but let's assume I'm giving you this wrong analogy. Just get along with it. Let's put it that way. So my father was a teacher. And because of that, I'm his son. I'm a teacher too. My father used to teach mechanics. I'm teaching C++. If it was an object-oriented thing, you tell me, for that, teach, I would have taught C++. But if you tell me, Mr. Solimanlu, teach, which you, you used my father's name, then I would taught you mechanics. That's an object-oriented world. If you look at the derived class, as a base class, it will forget being derived. It will lose all its capabilities and becomes the base class. How can I actually look at the derived class as a base class? In two ways, using the reference of the base class or using a pointer to the base class. You can put a derived class because a, derived, uh, because a cat is an animal, you can have an animal pointer and point to a cat with it. No problem, because an animal, a cat is an animal, right? Because a cat is an animal, I can have an animal reference and hold the reference. I can have a, an animal reference and hold the cat reference in the animal reference. But the problem is that when I refer to the cat as animal, it forgets to be that, that's a cat. It goes back being an animal. Let's take a look. So. In my main, so this is the animal thingy that we had. In my main, this is what I'm doing. Take a look. I am creating cat P pepper, okay? Then I'm saying animal pointer new cat. So I'm creating a dynamic cat in an animal pointer. Perfectly valid because cat is an animal. Remember, is a Inheritance has a attribute. Okay? For that has a head. It means I'm not a head, I, I own a head. <laughs> okay? By far that is a human, that's what I am. Okay? That's inheritance. Okay? So a cat is an animal, therefore I can actually instantiate a cat in an animal pointer. I can create an animal reference and hold the, uh, the reference of cat, uh, the pepper the cat in there. Or I just create an animal by itself. That has nothing to do with anything. I just created over there for you to know that when you create an animal, it's an animal. There is no cat. So <laughs> there is no need to think about this at all, but I just created it just for you to see. I'm just going to remove it. Uh, maybe I'm going to show it at the end or something. Am I showing it? No. Okay, so, so now as you see, I'm going to come over here. So let's take a look at the execution. So it runs. It creates the cat, and it has nine lives, right? Pepper the cat. It creates Tom. So Tom is created, and it's a cat with nine lives. Are we okay with this, everyone? All right. Now I'm putting the reference of P in AR. So AR is a reference of an animal 
as a new name for Pepper the cat. That simple thing you forget. It's just an animal. Nothing. There is no cat over there. Right? Now in here I'm going to say P act, Pepper acts. P move. In this one, move is actually implemented. Okay? So that's why you see it. In this version, I, I'm not, I'm not uh, leaving the, even move is uh, over, uh, uh, I overwrote uh, the, 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 the move to. And sound, meow, pepper sounds like animal. Are we, like, are we okay with this? Now if I come to the animal reference, we know that AR is a reference of P, correct? But because I am referring to pepper the cat as an animal, it forgets that it's a cat. See, I said AR act, act, I thought that Pepper is acting, it's not. It completely forgets all the updates and it acts only like an animal. You see that? Are we okay? Same thing with move. If I say AR move, it moves like an animal, forgets that it was a cat. And if I say sound, it sounds like animal as if the cat doesn't exist. Even worse. In here, at least, I have some way to access it because I have the P, right? In here, I only have an animal pointer to the cat. So there is no way to access the cat. Even if I created the cat, I only have the animal part in hand. That sucks. All the updates are out in the window, right? And it, it even gets worse. When I want to remove the animal pointer in which I have a cat, the compiler can only see the animal. Therefore, I'm going to have memory leak. When it actually wipes it out, it's going to only remove the animal. So the cat part is leaked. It's not deleted. OK? And at the end, everything else is good. Simba will be removed. Pepper will be removed, because they all was, were created directly as cats. And the other one is an animal. We don't even need to care about it. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? Yes. The pointer part. In the pointer part, when I created an animal dynamically, a cat dynamically inside an animal pointer, I do not have any cat reference to that object, correct? The only thing, when I say reference, I don't mean reference. I mean, I don't have any. I don't have any cat handle for that object. The only handle I have is an animal pointer, correct? Because of that, when I'm deleting the animal, there is no way for compiler to know that what is deleting is a cat. Because it's deleting an animal pointer, it will remove an animal from the memory. And therefore, the cat pot will remain in memory as leak. OK? There is a very easy way to fix this. OK, so what you see over here, I'm going to modify it first in here, and then I'm going to go to the other one. Just take a look. I'll show you how easy it is to get fixed. I'm going to come to the animal, and I'm going to say, hey, the act that you are seeing over here is virtual. Let's say I'm not going to move the move Wait, make the move virtual. And the sound is virtual. And the most important thing, the destructor is virtual. Now let me tell you what is the definition of virtual. Virtuality only comes in play when inheritance is there. When you don't have inheritance, write virtual. Don't write virtual does not make any difference. So the only way virtual virtuality becomes active and it does something is when you have inheritance. Number two, virtuality only gets activated if you have a derived class pointed to or referred to by a base class. You have a cat pointed by an animal or referred to by an animal. That's when virtuals get active. If you have a cat pointed to or by a cat, it doesn't give you rats behind if you have virtual or not because you are calling me far, that is my name. There is no need for it, OK? Now, what does virtuality do? By definition, you go to an interview, they tell you, what is virtuality? I'll give you the short form word first. 
Short form is this. What is virtual? Guarantees the latest version of a method is called. Virtuality, a virtual keyword, guarantees that the latest version of a method is called. Number two, if you want to be more specific, virtuality guarantees that the latest version of the method is called in the hierarchy of inheritance. Okay? Guarantees the latest method is called, no matter how you access the object. So what happens is this. I have an animal pointer pointing to a cat, right? I'm saying act. When compiler is, wants to run the act, it takes a look. Oh, it's virtual. Let me see if the object I'm dealing with is actually one of the children of the animal. If that's the case, I will call the latest version, not this one. Therefore, the action of the cat will be called. OK? And the most important thing, virtual destructor. As of this moment to the last day that you're alive and you are doing C++, that's the syntax of a destructor for you. Every single destructor you create, make it virtual, even if that virtual means nothing. Why? Because that guarantees that the latest object will be destroyed, not the first one. So when I delete the cat using an animal pointer, it sees, oh, the destructor is virtual. Let me see if it's a descendant of the, the animal. If that's the case, kills the descendant. And because descendant has everything inside, everything will be removed. So remember, your destructors from now on, no matter what you do in your workshops, project, anywhere, you create a destructor, you make it virtual. Why? Because if you do inheritance and inherit something from it, you're not going to have memory leak. Are we good? OK, now let's walk through it and see what happens. You saw what the output was. So over here, Tom did not act like a cat anymore. What did I do? I made the act and the sound virtual. Move, I didn't change. Move is not virtual. So there is no guarantee that latest version of move is called. Now, if I rerun the program of mine, it will say, ah, oh, stop. It will say, there we go. Now I'm going to rerun it. So as you see, I just added those three keywords. Nothing is different. So it creates everything as it did. P act, obviously, virtuals are not important because I have a cat calling a cat's action. No problem. In here, I am calling using animal reference. So when it wants to call the act, it looks at the animal's act. Because animal's act is virtual, the cats will be called. Move is not virtual. Therefore, animals will be called. Sound is virtual. Therefore, the latest version will be called. And the same thing with the, the pointer. Act of the cat, not move of the cat, but the sound of the cat. And when it deletes it, everything gets deleted because the latest thing will be destroyed, not the first one. So the problem is fixed. In a hierarchy of inheritance, if you want any feature of the class you are creating to be updated later, you must make it virtual. If you want to make sure that this action of your base class is never changed and always remains the same, you should not make it virtual. Is that clear for everyone? Do we understand this now? OK, so that's virtuality. All right, so I'm going to remove the virtuals from here because in the next project, I wanted to, you to see the, the, uh, the, the process of things happening. That's why I did it that way. So, so if you look at the next project over here, and I actually named the project accordingly. So in here, I'm saying uh, base reference and, and uh, virtual. You see that? So I'm going to make that as startup project and just show you, and then you can go for a break. So as you see, in this case, everything is virtual. Even move is virtual.
All right? So again, it's the exact same thing. And if I run it, uh, you will see that everything is updated. And I gave you some examples over here to show you what other cases are, are working the same. So for example, if you pass an animal by reference to a function, if you pass an animal by a reference to a function, and in that, I call it tickle. So when you tickle, the animal is going to make a sound, right? <laughs> Let's see. So this tickle thingy receives a reference to an animal. It doesn't matter what type of animal I pass to it. It's going to sound that way. So if I pass a cat to tickle, it's going to sound like a cat, although I'm saying animal.sound. That is why when you override, when you create helper functions for C out using O stream, and then you pass F stream to it, it writes like a file. Because the action of writing in C out is virtual, in O stream is virtual, and its child F stream will be invoked instead of that one. Okay, now you can go for a break. And we come back and we'll talk about the, the next one. Okay, five minutes break. All right, and please remind me to resume recording. All right, so just to see how those virtuality and how the virtuality and everything works, I created a, so the, this, this one, the animal, everything is virtual in it. So I made uh, the act, the move, and the sound, and everything virtual. Uh, I have an animal. I have a pepper the cat. Then I have a cat. So that is a cat with a pointer to cat, and a cat with an animal pointer. So all the things that we've tested in here. And you go through it, you've got to be, see that it's, that it's exactly the same thing as you had, uh, as I mentioned. So um, I'm going to walk through it just to see uh, how everything works. Um, so as you obviously when it when it creates the, oh I have, I have to set the debugging to true my apologies and run it again so um as you see, it just creates, so rat over here is just an animal. There is no, nothing created over there like that. And then I have uh, pepper with P. I have a cat in a pointer called C. I have a cat in an animal pointer called AP. And I'm referring to the pepper, the cat, using animal reference. So as you see, for A, we have no problem. It's a, don't be mistaken, when you see virtual, don't go look for inheritance. It may be just itself because animal, it's an animal. I don't need to care if it's virtual or not. I have a base class, pointed by base class, nothing. It just acts like, like, like an animal. But when it, and the same thing over here. Virtuality is not in play because I have a cat acting like a cat. No problem. Virtuality not in play because I have a cat with a pointer to cat. Virtuality doesn't mean anything in here. Here is where virtuality actually comes in play because I have the act uh, using an animal reference, which is going to act the same way because everything is virtual. Okay? And the same thing with the animal pointer. Okay? Uh, everything's going to act like a cat. Okay? Now, the next thing over here we look at is deleting. When I'm deleting a cat using a cat pointer, Virtuality doesn't mean anything. It's going to get deleted properly, as you see, removing Fluffy the, the cat and Fluffy the animal. With the animal pointer, that's the part that I have to make sure it, it, the destructor is virtual. Because the destructor is virtual, no memory leak over there. Tom, the cat, and animal are gone. When I'm tickling an animal, the animal A is passed, the reference is passed to an animal reference. Therefore, it's going to sound like rat the animal and say ha 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 and laugh, right? And then it comes over here and now I'm tickling Pepper the cat. So P is a cat passed to an animal reference. Virtuality over here guarantees that the latest version of sound is called. Therefore, it's going to say meow and then ha ha ha. All right? So that's the beauty of virtuality. Virtu uh, virtuality makes a method truly polymorphic because your method 
is identical. Look at here, A dot sound. There is no difference in prototypes. You are saying, animal, make a sound. Once it sounds like a rat, the other time it sounds like a cat. Without any difference, that's true polymorphism. Okay? It literally picks up the right one based on the type and runs it. You say airplane fly, it flies like an airplane. You say pigeon fly, it flies like a pigeon. Are we okay with this? All right. The next thing that I want to talk about over here, and obviously when I go out, everything is dead in the reverse order. Um, so Pepper will die and the, the, the rat, the animal will die. <clears throat> now, I always try to come up with good, good examples for the next thing that I want to talk about. Um, but let's see if I can actually um, um, talk about it, uh, uh, make it uh, right now. So um, let me bring it up. OK, so in here I have a cat and a dog, actually. So I have animal, I have a cat class, and a dog class. So I have two different classes. Cat says meow, dog says wolf. So it kind of shows us how the virtuality works. But <clears throat> let's talk about us. As a human being, do you, as a human being, do you agree that human beings can talk? Right? Yes, if as a programmer, I told you to create a, a class called human, will you create a talk method in it? You will, because a human can talk, correct? But can you implement it? Can you implement the talking of a human? You can't, because you don't know which language the human is talking in. If it's a human being Persian, Farsi is going to come out. If it's a Chinese Cantonese, or Chinese Mandarin is going to come out, or other 500 languages they speak in the country. Right? <laughs> right? So it's something like, so if, if it's, I don't know, Indian, I don't want to even go there because the number of languages over there is like, poo. Okay? So again, we are all sure that a human being can talk. So we need to have a method talk. But I can't implement it. You follow? That's what we call a pure virtual method, a method that guarantees that the function should exist, otherwise the class can't be. If I ask you to create a human being, if I, if I told you to create a car, everybody knows what a car is. You know all the specifications of a car, correct? If I told you to close your eyes, imagine a car, picture a car in your mind, you can't. Because which one? Is it a Ford? Is it a Ford Festiva? Yada, yada. Is it a Tesla Model 3? Is it a, I don't know, Ford F-150? Is it a Cadillac? Is it, you don't know. You, you need to know what it is, right? So these type, of, these type of classes who have unfinished business in them, we call them abstract-based classes. They have virtual functions. But virtual functions in these classes are a special one. Take a look. An animal must be able to make a sound, but I don't know how. You see that? I make virtual void sound. I don't know how. I'm going to put equal to zero, which means this function, the sound function, in the animal class is a virtual class, but has no implementation. It has no body. There is no body of the function. Because of that fact, an animal cannot exist anymore. You cannot instantiate an animal because it has unfinished business. So why am I creating that pure virtual method? To enforce anybody creating any type of animal to make it make a sound. Otherwise, they cannot create an animal. To enforce design. If I 
if I tell you a car drives, the fact that the car drives, it has to be an action of a car. How does it drive? I don't know. It may have an electric engine. It may have a gasoline engine. It may have a diesel engine. How you're going to design it, we don't know. So I'm going to say car drives equals zero, and it's virtual, which means you cannot create a car that doesn't drive. It doesn't make sense. The whole purpose of a car is to drive. But I still don't know how. So I design it. Your job is, will, is to complete it. That's why that animal of mine cannot exist. I cannot instantiate it if I go to my main over here and show you my main that is miss. Oh, here it is. If I show you my main in here and I try to create an animal as you see, if I compile it, it's going to give me an error. It's going to tell me, hey, you cannot actually. Yeah. Did I make it as a? Oh, yeah, there you go. So as you see, it says, object of abstract class type animal is not allowed, which means now animal is called an abstract base class. So if somebody asks you, what is an abstract base class? You got to tell them an abstract base class is a class that at least has one pure virtual method. It could have many, or it could... Uh, but at least it needs to have one. If you have one pure virtual method, that class becomes abstract. That class becomes an idea. It cannot get instantiated unless you inherit it into a class that has an implemented sound. Now, if I come to a cat, you will see that my cat has a sound that says meow. If you come and see my dog, my dog has a sound that says woof woof. So dog and cat can get implemented, but animal cannot. And the beautiful thing about it is that, take a look. To show you again the true polymorphism nature of the thing, I create a dog, right? And I create an array of four animal pointers. I create a cat, a dog, another cat, and I put the address of that dog in here. So this animal pointer array of mine has four objects in it, all different. Cats and dogs. I put it in a loop, and one by one I say, P0, make a sound. P1, make a sound. P2, make a sound. I don't need to worry about how the sound's going to come out. If it's a dog, it's going to be a wolf. If it's a, sa if it's a, if it's a cat, it's going to be a, a meow. And it automatically will call the latest version. And the exact same thing, when I delete, everything that is getting deleted will be perfectly set. This is called pure virtual method, and that class becomes an abstract base class. And running it, I'll show you exactly what happens. So in this one, I don't even have a cat reference anywhere. And I just created a dog to show you how things happen. I could have that dog dynamic over here too. It doesn't make any difference. So I could have over here something like this. So let me comment this. I could have over here and it would work perfectly. Doesn't make any difference. You follow? Okay, so I'm going to go back. I'm not going to do it this way, but yeah. So I'm just going to say, I could have done the, this, but I, I, I'm not going to do it. I'm just, I'm just going to comment it and uncomment this one because I want you to, to see different versions of the thing. So now if I run the program, I have three dynamic classes created and one statically allocated one, which uh, one is the... so. In here, dog is a regular dog that is getting created. Let me just come over here. So as you see, creating Nilo, the, the animal, Nilo the dog was created, right? And in here, all of, them gets all of them get created back to back. Jack the animal, uh, that's the, the cat, the Jack that is getting created. Uh, and then Snowy, the animal, Snowy dog, Jill the animal, Jill the cat. So they are all in here. 
Now I'm going to go through them one by one. Uh, let's actually make the sound uh, a little uh, different over here. Where is the cat? So in here I'm going to say, I'm going to say name says meow. <laughs> so I just want uh, them to uh, to say the name too, so so it becomes more interesting. So in here I'm going to uh, go to dog dot cpp, and I'm going to say over here works. Okay, so. Now let's run the program. So I'm going to go one by one. All right. So now, as you see, Jack says meow. That goes to the next one. Now Snowy barks woof woof. And Jill says meow. And Milo barks woof woof. Then it comes over here and deletes the three of them. Jack, Snowy, and Jill, they're all gone. And then C outs, that's the end of main. And at the end, the automatic variable D will be get del deleted, that is Milo. Are you okay with this? And that, ladies and gentlemen, are pure virtual methods and abstract base classes. All right? We have one more thing about abstract base classes, and I'm going to talk about that the next day. Okay? Which is essentially uh, an abstract uh, base class that only has pure virtual methods, nothing else. There is no difference in C++. They're identical, but in object-oriented science, object-oriented design, that type of abstract base class that has no impl implemented method, and all the methods are virtual, they call it an interface. That's all. So essentially, I told you what it is, but I'm going to show you examples for it. All right? That's it. Any questions? Suggestions? Objections? Yes. Abstract based class? A class that has at least one pure virtual method. A class that at least has one pure virtual method. Therefore, it's abstract. Therefore, you cannot instantiate it. Any other question? Thank you. OK, so I'm going to push this right now. I'm going to stop it and push it right now into the repository. So you have something to work with. Here you go. Z, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to commit ZAA uh, derived classes and virtual, virtuals. Select all, commit and push. Oh, I have to pull first because I made some changes, I guess, somewhere. And all right, push again. There we go. Now you have everything. Okay? Thank you very much, and see you next time. I'm going to run. <laughs>